Welcome back to DIY Willie. Today, well, we're gonna work on something that you may have seen in my videos, in some of my past videos. It's our 2015 uh, Scion XB. Uh, it's been a good car. We kind of uh, came across it accidentally. And uh, well, we added it to the DIY Willie fleet. Uh, I haven't really had to do much to it, just some cleanup. Um, yeah. I did clean the throttle body. Uh, it was idling really bad. In fact, it would almost stall. So I uh, cleaned up the throttle body and uh, now it runs perfectly. Um, I had to do some cleanup on the inside. And uh, well, I also, I think I, I replaced the, the subwoofer in it because the subwoofer was, was shot. It was blown out. So uh, today, what we need to do is change the front struts. The driver's side strut bottoms out really bad. You can hear it clunk over any little bump. And uh, we're also gonna inspect the brakes while we're in there. And if, if we need to change the brakes, we'll change the brakes. Uh, hopefully it's just the front ones and not the back ones because I bought the front ones already. But the, they're not expensive. I'll buy the back ones if it turns out to be the back. But it's uh, been a cool little car. Really enjoy driving it, and uh, for the most part, it's it's pretty clean. Needs a vacuuming right now, but uh, you know, it's got the common things down there on the bottom where the cup holders are broken out. That's broken out. You can buy those pieces again, but they break a lot. They break often in these cars. So, but it's a pretty cool little car. I think it's got uh, 160,000 miles on it. I think there's the subwoofer now this subwoofer used to be a Panasonic subwoofer and it's a 12 inch and uh, I bought a replacement 12 inch infinity and when I tried to drop it in it fell right through the hole so uh, rather than try to buy another subwoofer the correct dimensions I just made a ring out of some birch and uh, bolted the ring in in place where the where the Panasonic woofer was and then made the holes for the infinity woofer and it works perfectly it sounds good i like it a lot but uh yeah it turned out really nice the car overall you know the previous owner had a dog obviously there's a few scratches on it around there with the dog just getting the back but it's a cool car and uh yeah let me get the hood open we'll take a look at the engine now all the scions that i've ever looked at always have this dent in the front kind of hard to tell i guess it's a common thing I, I i've seen a lot of them with that same dent so this must be something where either somebody pushes on the hood or a weak spot or something but uh yeah it's pretty good i should put some hydraulic struts on this one it's a heavy hood all right so we got the hood up and another thing i want to replace on this car is uh the broken front grille I found them pretty cheap on eBay. I'll probably be picking one up so I can change this out, make another video about that. But uh, the engine, you know, it's fairly clean. It's got a little dust on it. And, uh, you know, a little bit of dust. It's fairly clean though. Today, we're changing the struts. You know, there's the top of the struts. And uh, I don't know, we may be able to remove this. Oh, we can't get that out. To get that bolt that's way back there it might be a challenge but uh, we'll get it done it's tight on both sides and uh we'll get those bolts out we'll get this get this thing up in the air we'll chalk the back we'll get those bolts out and uh we'll get these struts off now i bought the uh the unassembled struts so i have to put the springs the original springs on the new struts it's not hard i could have bought uh, pre-assembled struts that came together all you do is bolt them in but I, I saved the money a little bit and went and went for maybe a bit of better quality strut we'll see it here in a minute uh, when I get them open now we're gonna be lifting the front up off the ground on jack stands and even though it has the emergency brake on you always want to put a wheel chalk behind the wheel that is still on the ground 
and we'll put that right there. I'll put another one on the other side. Probably overkill, but we'll put another one on the other side. So we're out here ready to go. We got the jack standing by. We got the jack stands ready to go into the body. And uh, man, it's a hot one today. We're supposed to reach temperatures of 79 degrees. And I'm a little bit inland, so it'll probably be close to 80 or 81. I had to change to the brim cat because of my neck. Uh, it's getting sunshine. I don't want to melt. And uh, I heard something the other day that uh, where I live, we were 100 degrees warmer than a lot of the places in the country. And at that time, our temperature was 64 degrees. So at 64 degrees, I was <laughs> where I'm at was 100 degrees warmer than some other places in the country. That's an amazing way to look at it at 64 degrees being 100 degrees warmer than a lot of other places man i feel for those people but also i i envy the the snow and the temperatures they have it gets hot here and i miss the snow but anyway back to work on the car so we've we've got the uh the blocks behind the wheels now i recommend i recommend before you lift the car to get the hubcaps off and crack loose the lug nuts they can be pretty tight and I had to use my breaker bar. I think it's a 24 inch breaker bar to crack them. And I'll get the other side done right now. And then we'll get the car in the air. So now that I got both wheels off the ground, I'm looking at it. And you can see where this tire is wearing kind of on the outside. Um, yeah, it's really wearing on the outside. So uh, yeah, there's definitely an alignment issue going on. Um, could be too much toe or it could be too much camber. This is the back tire. You can see how it, the tread pattern on the edge of the tire is a lot different. So that's a good sign that the uh, tire, the alignment is off. And uh, we'll get that fixed once we get these struts replaced. And it also could be the struts causing the body to sit a little weird on the tire. But uh, I think it would, it would lean more towards the inside if it were caused by the struts, not the outside. Outside is usually some type of alignment, either camber, toe in, something like that. You know, I don't think, I don't know if the caster would cause that because usually when it wears on the outside, the tire's scraping like, like this when it, when it's driving. So uh, yeah, we gotta get that fixed. All right, look at this. So I've got the three knots off the top of the strut or the, uh, coil over whatever you want to call it but I've got the three uh, bolts loose they were 14 millimeter they were not very tight which is a good thing and uh, gee, 14 millimeter right there it's best to use the ratchet type that can get on there and just you know ratchet it off um, I did have a longer 19 millimeter to attach to the 14 millimeter just to give it a little extra torque a little extra leverage to loosen the bolt i've got the one bolt right there holding it still uh, before i let that one go the shock will come down so i've got my floor jack under the wheel or under the uh, lower control arm just to support it when i take the last bolt out on top i don't want the whole thing just to drop down it's hard on the cv uh joints and it's hard on the brake line and, and speed sensor you don't want to damage those so uh Let's go ahead and get this last one off. I believe it's just finger tight. And hopefully I don't drop it. Just like that. There we go. Take it off like that. And I'll put it with the rest of them down in this little pocket. Thank you, Toyota. Now take it a look under here. This is the sway, uh, sway bar uh, bracket bolt right there. This is a 17 millimeter. We've got the uh, brake line and speed sensor bolt. This is a 10 millimeter. And the main strut bolts are 22 millimeter on both sides. So uh, let's go ahead and get those off. And uh, we'll get this thing pulled out. It should be pretty simple after that. There is one little clip right here that I'll just pop off with my screwdriver. Then we'll be able to take the strut off and uh, start taking the spring off. Unsnap that, pull the speed wire out. Now, 
speed wire bolts, 10 millimeter. Just zap that out of there. Set the bolt aside. That will release the speed wire. And the brake cable, or the brake hose. Just kind of give it a twist and it comes right out of its spot. Now we can get the remaining bolts. We'll go ahead and get the other remaining three bolts. As I said before, the sway brace, or the sway arm is a 17 millimeter. Should buzz right off of there. Now, if by chance this bolt is, is frozen on yours or the whole thing is spinning, there is a, a, a place where you can put an Allen wrench inside here and hold it and then use a regular box in to loosen it up. I was fortunate enough mine came right off. You just slide it out of the way like that. Now we got the big boys, 22 millimeter. And I did loosen them up to make them easier. They come out just like that. They look like they have some thread locker on them. So we might put some back on them. It looks like white. I'm holding the backside with a 22 millimeter. Just like that. put them back together keep them together like that set them aside now at this point this thing could fall forward <laughs> it could fall forward this way so uh, we want to be really careful and uh, just pull it out like so we don't want to damage the uh, the CB axle just take it out so like that piece of cake there we go now we gotta uh, put the spring tensioner on this and uh, take some of the load off the spring, take off the top hat and switch it over to our new ones. All right, so look, so we're looking at the struts. This bolt pattern is almost the same, um, but I'm not gonna take any chances. I put a little mark on the front of the strut, just a little on those guys on those cloud cars. I put a little mark, a little Sharpie on the front, the side that faces me. So I know that this is the front of it and I'll put it back together the same way. Now there's a little dust cap here that they provide to you. Take the little dust cap and there's a bolt inside. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the spring compressor on here and take the tension off and then we'll hit that bolt and zip it out here and then we can disassemble it and put it on the new one. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the new one. So I got a KYB gas strut assembly for our shock absorber. Looks just like that. It's the KYB G gas shock absorber. And uh, yeah, I really like the KYBs. Now, like I said, I could have got one that had the spring and the top hat and everything already. But I think uh, for, for spending just a little bit more money and sacrificing my time to put the spring on this one, I get a little better quality with the KYB than that other one would have been. But honestly, this is a good shock and uh, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to run this one. There are some instructions here on how to do it. And uh, honestly, I didn't read them. I've done this job so many times on different cars that uh, I didn't take the time for the instructions. There may be some torque specs on here. I don't know uh, if we see them somewhere. If not, I'm definitely going to put the torque specs in the description. Anybody else is going to do this job. So, uh, yeah, like I said, let's get the tension off those springs and uh, get things back together. What do you say? Okay, so we've got the spring compressor installed. You want to try to get the springs evenly on both sides like that. And you want to try to get as many of the springs as you can. This one basically I've got three on each side and we're just going to run them down with the uh, 
I'm just gonna run them down with the impact, tightening them up. And that will tighten the spring coils up and relieve the spring tension. You wanna do it evenly? There we go. That's probably good enough. Now let's see if we can get the top bolts off without the shaft spinning. Now if the shaft spins, it's no big deal. These are the old ones we can lock onto with some vice grips and then hold it. No big deal because if we damage or scratch the shaft, these are throw away anyway. But let's see if we can get this off without having to do that. It's a uh, three quarter and 19 millimeter on the top. And the nut came off perfect. Now the new sock comes with a new nut. There's a washer inside too. Right inside, there's a washer. We just lift it off like that. Lift off the spring retainer like that. That's what the bump stop kind of holds everything in place. It's got a bushing on top that's pretty worn out. I might should have got that new bushing. And then of course, the uh, boot. And then we can just lift the spring off like that. There we go. There's the old strut. You can see where there's a little bit of moisture around here. So the, uh, the uh, pressure was leaking by. There's a little, little bit of grease right there. So the hydraulic oil inside was getting out. Other than that though, it looks like it's in good shape. But we've got the new ones to go on in its place. Good idea to compare them. Make sure they're the same, which they are. They look identical. We'll just have to change this clip over to this one, right there in that hole right there. And uh, there's another dust cover down here or, or uh, where the spring sits on. Kind of eliminate the noise on the, on the perch. We'll put that one on the new one as well. So now we've got a bunch of parts. We've got an old strut. We've got a new strut. These are probably the original struts. And uh, yeah, let's get all the parts swapped over and get ready to put it back in. First off, we want to take this one. This is for our, our spring to sit in in the bottom. Kind of eliminates noise, gives it something solid to sit in. You could clean them up. There's also a little tab that fits inside that hole, like that. And uh, like I said, you could just kind of dust them off or wire brush them, whatever you want to do. Just get the dirt out. It might make it quieter, <laughs> like that. That's probably good enough. Just clean them up a little bit. <laughs> About a dust. And we want to uh, put our spring back in. Be careful to uh, line up the hole. The spring sits in there. If you kind of remember how it came out anyway. And looking down, you'll see everything fits just in place. Just inside the, the little pad that goes on the bottom. Now you're reassembling this basically in the reverse order. So we have the dust boot, which also has the spring perch in it. And you can see it's in the same uh, rotation as the spring. This one is this part here. So we'll slip it over. And we'll make sure that we get it right. There we go. We'll take this nut off. We don't need this nut. putting it back in the reverse order. So next would be this one. Now this is not only, there's that extra bushing for the bottom. So this is not only the bump stop, but this also aligns the, uh, the shock in the center of the spring. So when it goes on, there's a, one more thing. There's, it's like D-shaped right here. There's a flat spot on one side and that flat spot coincides with the flat spot on the uh, the shaft for the shock. So we put that on, line it up, and push everything to the center. Now when we release the spring tension, this will be perfectly aligned in the correct position. We have the, the uh, pad on there, 
extra little bushing. Now these have, as you can see, they have bearings. And it might be a good idea that I put some more grease in that bearing. Uh, that's where this thing rides up there and seals it like that. As you can see, I might go ahead and pack some more grease in here just to make sure there's enough. Now that I see there's a bearing there, um, a lot of them are just rubber bushings, but this being a bearing for the turning and stuff like that, I'll probably go ahead next time and change this. So I have a new one. I can see through the bearing, so the grease is kind of packed in and dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and repack this with just some wheel bearing grease and uh, we'll put it back together. So let me pack that with grease and I'll get back with you. Okay, so I hope this shows. You can kind of see where I greased the bearing and the red grease is now pushing the black grease out of the bearing. That means that I've got it pretty well packed and you can't see through anymore like you could before. So that bearing was pretty dry and uh, now it's very well. Okay, so now we take this, the spring and the shock assembly. Make sure this washer is center over it. Now this is the, the washer that seals the bearing on the bottom side. You guys are in the right angle. Bring you over here. All right. So we know that this is the front of the spring, this side. And we put a mark right there, I believe. So we'll assemble it back the way it was. For that mark, where is that mark? I think it was right there. That would be the front of the spring. And there was no washer in there. I thought there was. But now we'll go ahead and run the nut down. Again, I didn't see any torque specs, but if I find them, I'll put them in the description. I'm just gonna run it down until it bottoms out. Like that. Plenty good. Plenty, plenty good. Now it rotated a little bit, but we can put it back into the correct orientation. That's fine. Now we can go ahead and release the tension off the spring. And uh, this one will be done. Let's do that. Back them off a little bit at a time. Because it gets stuck. See how it gets stuck? <laughs> completely loaded again now there are different types of spring compressors some have hooks that lock on the inside some have hooks that lock on the inside outside different than this this has little safety pins right here I have some that don't have the little safety pins there's also a machine you can put this in that compresses it just by pulling down a lever uh, that's all nice equipment to have that's usually like a shot but these work you know you can buy these at any auto parts store and uh, they work pretty good. I've used these so many times and I've even clearanced them for different springs for different vehicles like the, the Toyota. I use I had to clearance them a little bit to get them to clear top and bottom. And uh, yeah, well, there we go. It's done. Look at that. Ready to mount back on the vehicle. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. What do you say? Looks good. I like it a lot. Oh, I guess we could put the dust cap back on. It just pushes in like that. Done. All right, let's get it back on the car. Okay, here we go. We're going to put it back in. We've got bolts ready on the top. I think I'm going to try to put the bolts on the bottom in first. That's how it came out. And we'll try that first and see if it cooperates with me. Now this has got a little bit of the thread locker in it. And I'm not going to worry about putting the thread locker back in. We'll just torque them in there and get them as tight as we can. It shouldn't be a problem. 
and uh, have that standing by ready to go. Let's see how difficult this is. Let's see if I can do it like that. Hey, there we go. There we go. There. Now that'll solve my problem. There we go. That'll make life easier. Hey, <laughs> you bet that did make it easier. Now we can jack it back up. Gotta go up a little bit more. There we go. Got the top one in. There we go. Now, let's get the bottom one in. Just kind of get some of the excess thread locker on there. Off. Good job, Willie. We got it. Good job, Willie. Can't get better than that. Now let's get the impact. That's the uh, 22 millimeter right there. I'm gonna hold it on the back side and we're gonna run it in. You know what? I don't need the extension on there. I don't need the extension. There we go. Now, put it on forward. Let it rip. Let it rip. <coughs> oh, nice. I like it, Willie. There you go, Willie. That's good stuff. Now we got the sway bar in link. You can kind of maybe lift the whole thing up a little bit more. There we go. Let's go ahead and put that on. That's the 17 millimeter. 19, 17. That's the 17 millimeter. Again, I'm sure there's some torque specs. And I'll get them and put them in the description. But for right now, let's go. Let's go, Willie. All right. Put the brake line in, just in reverse. Kind of give it a twist. It fits back into place. There we go. That's the 10 millimeter right there. Good job, Willie. Good job. Good job. Uh, here we go. That's all good. Nice. I like it. I like it a lot. It looks really good. One more thing. The speed wire clip. We need to put it on that side. Get it off the old strut. Okay, so here's that little clip. You can just grab it with pliers. See how it's got the little tongs on each side? Just grab it with pliers and give them a little push in and it pulls right out of the old strut. Now put it back in, you just snap it back in. No big worries. And remember, I remember it goes in that hole right there. So uh, I'm gonna push it in and I'll clip the wire back in. So there we go. There's the clip back in, it's pushed in, it's locked in. There's the speed sensor line bolted to the strut. The brake line is in that bracket too. All the bolts are tight, torqued down. Now we just gotta get the top ones up there on the top. And uh, we're done right here besides some cleanup on the brake rotor where we touched it. You know, we don't want that grease to spread around. So I'll get some brake cleaner, clean this up before I put the tire back on. Why is it blinking? First off, let's get those bolts tightened in there. And then we'll call the uh, driver's side done. Okay, so the three top bolts are all tight. Again, it's 14 millimeter. I used the ratchet 
like this and just tighten them up including the one all the way in the back you know you just get it on there tighten it up as much as you can I use an extension on the ratchet or on the wrench like this to get a little extra torque on it and they're tight they weren't that tight from the factory anyway I loosened them up very easily so uh, now it's all done I can put the rotor back on clean the rotor up and put the tire back on and driver's side is done now it's time to tackle the passenger side now I'm not gonna film the passenger side because I filmed it all for the driver's side just to make things go a little easier because it is getting late in the day the sun's moving around and I don't want to be stuck out here when it starts getting cold yeah cold right I'll still be in the 60s <laughs> not like some of you over there on the East Coast that are freezing right now but I don't want to work in the, in the cold and in the dark so I have about two hours left I'm gonna go ahead and knock this side out and uh, I'll show you once I get it all back down on the ground now it's also while we're in here take a look at your bushings you can see this one's starting to crack inside it might be getting close to time to change that might have been a good time to change it right now I don't know the other one looks pretty good tie rod boots look good steering shaft you know everything looks really good there and the sway bar end links look look okay so uh, CV boots a little bit of grease here but they're not leaking bad or anything so you know when we're in here like this it's always a good idea just to take a look at some of the other parts around and uh, the brakes I had talked about maybe doing the brakes but there's a good uh, quarter inch or three-eighths of an inch of pad left there I'm gonna leave those alone I'm not gonna do any work to them even though I bought them I won't use them right now uh, the rotor does have some heat scoring but uh, this still stops good makes a little bit of noise when you uh, uh, first start to roll you know because you, you get a little moisture on the brakes over the night and uh, they get a little rusty so once you get going you kind of it kind of wears that off and it stops it still stops fine so uh, I don't see any reason to change those pads yet we'll keep them on stock and uh, I'll just put them on the shelf and next time I'll have the parts ready to go to change those brakes so I'm gonna get going right now I'm gonna do the passenger side we'll get the wheels back on we'll get it on the ground we'll take it for a ride all right all right let's get started on the passenger side 10 millimeter first Seventeen millimeter on the sway bar. Put the hardware on to the side. Sway bar out. I've already got the three on top loose, and uh, well, now it's time to get the big boys. Now I may have to, uh, I may have to get some grunt out, and use the pry bar to break those because my impact just does not have. The torque for it but let's see how they are let's see there we go without stripping them i'm gonna stand up they're pretty tight come on willie let's do this there we go there we go come on willie put some weight behind it uh. There we go. Okay. Woo. Now I get the impact and we'll get them out of there. Just like that. Good boy, Willie. Let's go. Let's go. Woo. All right, check it out. Passenger side is done. New struts in. Springs all assembled, everything. All the hardware is tight. We're good to go. I've already cleaned the rotor. I'll be putting the tires back on now, the wheels. The inside bolts are all tight. So I'll get the, uh, I'll get the wheels back on and we'll put it on the ground. All right, guys. For a job well done, another successful DIY Willy project. Changing out those struts. 
the old ones in the box ready for the trash and uh yeah car drives great they made a huge difference on the way the car drives much more firm doesn't have any more clunks going over speed bumps yeah i really liked it it's a good project uh brakes looked okay i didn't bother with the brakes right now uh but those struts man that's an a plus right there those needed changed and uh well it's an easy job and it made a world of a difference with the way the car feels i went over bumps and no more clunks uh just feels a lot more firm i think i'm gonna go ahead and get the kyb rear shocks now uh just to kind of equal it out i'm sure they're the original shocks with 160,000 miles on them it doesn't feel bad but uh the front feels a lot more firm so i'll go ahead and change the rear shocks and uh, we'll be good to go with this car man it's a really nice car i really like it and uh well if you like the video give it a thumbs up uh thanks for stopping by and checking out my videos i always come back to diy willie for uh your car needs your uh small engines mini bikes whatever we do it all around here and we have fun while we're doing it um yeah another successful diy willie project and uh man it was a good one so uh i'll see you next time bye